This is a C. Jason podcast. My name is Andrea Kata, and I am a nephrologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I feel privileged to be able to talk to you today about our recent study on the association of bilateral oophorectomy and the development of chronic kidney disease. We wanted to look at this potential association as it has long been observed that women have a lower incidence of chronic kidney disease and a slower progression of chronic kidney disease than men until after menopause when the rates are similar. This change in incidence before and after menopause suggests that estrogen deprivation may have a role in kidney disease progression. We set out to determine whether women who undergo bilateral oophorectomy before age 50 are at a higher risk of developing chronic kidney disease. To answer this question, we use the population-based resources of the Rochester Epidemiology Project, a records linkage system that has medical records and laboratory data on Olmsted County, Minnesota residents dating back to the 1960s. From the Olmsted County, Minnesota population, Dr. Walter Roca and colleagues identified a cohort of 1,653 women who underwent oophorectomy from 1988 to 2007 and one aged matched woman who had not undergone oophorectomy by the procedure date. We followed these women forward for 14 years after the procedure date and identified women who developed new onset chronic kidney disease, defined as an EGFR of less than 60 on two occasions at least three months apart. My name is Karen Smith and I am a statistical analyst at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The two groups of women were very different at baseline. Women who underwent ophorectomy had higher BMIs and were less educated. In addition, they were more likely to have previous diagnoses of chronic medical conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, depression, and anxiety. To deal with these significant differences between the groups, we adjusted our models using inverse probability weights that took into account 17 pre-existing conditions, years of education, race, BMI, smoking, age, and calendar year at baseline. We found that women who underwent bilateral ophorectomy had a 42% higher risk for developing chronic kidney disease than women who had not undergone ophorectomy. The risk of developing chronic kidney disease was 14% in women who had not undergone ophorectomy and 20% in women who had undergone ophorectomy, a 6.6% increase in absolute risk. The risk was even higher in women who underwent ophorectomy before age 45. This study adds to the body of evidence showing that premature estrogen deprivation may result in the development of chronic medical conditions in women, including chronic kidney disease. Bilateral orphrectomy is also a new sex-specific risk factor for chronic kidney disease and one that may be modifiable with changes in practice. Hysterectomy is the second most common surgical procedure in women and ophorectomy is often performed at the time of hysterectomy to decrease ovarian cancer risk, even in average risk women. In our study population, 89% of the oophorectomy procedures were done at the time of hysterectomy. Perhaps women who have an average risk of ovarian cancer should not have their ovaries removed routinely at the time of hysterectomy. Thanks for listening. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology, all rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified healthcare provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast of the American Society of Nephrology.